It's an honor for me to present this next award to Rachel Zoll, the national religion reporter for the Associated Press. Everybody here knows Rachel, either in person or by name. For one thing, she has scooped everybody here in this room multiple times. <laughs> her expertise on the beat is really something to behold. And when you get to know her, you see she has one of the great personalities in the profession, or really anywhere. This makes it very hard to get mad at Rachel Zoll, even when she's beat you on a story in your hometown. Or if you're a source and she writes something you don't like, because the story was fair. Now, while Rachel has personally covered all of the, large relig the largest religion stories of the 21st century, her impact on the beat has far transcended her byline. For one thing, she herself personally wrote the religion chapter of the AP style book. And she has spent countless hours over the years helping AP colleagues around the country and around the world on their own religion stories um, on just about every topic. So I wound up spending a lot of time on this presentation, and, and I'll tell you why. I started out by reaching out to AP reporter Walter Ratliff, who's, who's actually here, for some anecdotes about Rachel, you know, what it's like to work with her, maybe a little bit of dirt, you know? And anyway, not only did Walter only say one thing, amazing thing after another about her, but he said, oh, you got to call Noreen Gillespie and John Affleck. They work closely with Rachel at the AP, and they think the world of her. So I call Noreen and John, and then they rave about Rachel, and they say, oh, you got to call David Crary and Brian Carroll of Alano. So I call Brian and David, and the same things happen on and on and on. It's very clear that the people who work with Rachel Zoll both respect and adore her. Those two words, adore and respect, came up so many times when people talked about her that I struggled over which one to use first. Here are some of the things that... Um, her colleagues say about Rachel, quote, Rachel is a whole package. She could report, she could write, get information, she can get people to talk, and she's a great colleague, a total team player. Quote, in a business where you get a lot of aggressive personalities, Rachel is aggressive in all the best ways. She's super competitive and super knowledgeable about her beat, but also an incredibly gentle soul. Quote, it's wonderful in the chaos of a breaking news situation to have someone as wise and even keeled as Rachel. Quote, she may be the most universally beloved person, not in the, in, the in the New York newsroom, but in the entire AP. My favorite anecdote from these conversations involved two common themes, her professionalism and the sense of calm that she was known for as she worked. So the AP has a, as an annual meeting attended by editors of many publications that subscribe to the AP, and one point of this is to remind them of all the great things the AP does. In 2005, Rachel was scheduled to talk at this meeting about religion coverage except that the Pope had recently died and Rachel was in Rome covering the election of his successor. So from Rome, they put Rachel on video feed back to a room in New York, standing with St. Peter's Square in the background, and so she's making her presentation talking about the value of religion coverage, when all of a sudden behind her, puffs of smoke start to rise. <laughs> Everybody around her in Rome starts going nuts. Photographers and journalists from other organizations are running around behind her frantically, losing their minds. All of this is seen on the big screen back in New York by the, by, the, uh, by the editors. Rachel, though, stays in control. She looks back over her shoulder, surveys the scene, and says to the editors back home, there appears to be smoke rising. The smoke is black, so they'll have to vote again. <laughs> Calm and cool like she's Anderson Cooper. So now I've called about a dozen of her AP colleagues, and they're all saying nice things, so I figure I still really need some dirt. So I reached out to one of Rachel's fiercest rivals on the beat, Lori Goodstein of the New York Times. <laughs> Here's what Lori had to say, quote, I truly admire and respect Rachel and always enjoy seeing her when our paths cross on the beat. Lori said she always relished watching Rachel step to the microphone and ask questions at the bishop's press conferences, the Catholic bishop's press conferences. Lori said, quote, Rachel has a way of being confrontational without sounding confrontational. <laughs> she always goes to the heart of the matter and she's such a clear thinker. I always felt she represented all journalists well at those conferences. Those, bis uh, those bishops' conferences, especially a decade ago, were where many religion journalists from around the country got to know each other, but just like RNA conferences are. Back then, I wrote for the Newark Star-Ledger, and I remember being immediately impressed with Rachel and her work. Her leads and stories were always on port with all the context you'd want. And in a profession where so many of the great ones have great egos, she stood out for the way she carried herself. Never saw her act like a big shot or talk down to her colleagues. I see people nodding around the room right now because they know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've seen her calmly help stressed out young reporters on the beat many times. And I'll say this, 
Her leads were always greatly admired by my editors in my newsroom. <laughs> I'd be in the press room at these bishops' conferences, and I'd get phone calls from my boss in Newark saying, maybe her lead should be like the AP's. Now, you really couldn't get mad at Rachel Zoll, like I said. Her leads were the best leads. And it truly impressed me how she helped keep the AP influential within our world of religion journalism. I often thought of those scenes from The Boys on the Bus, where all the newspaper reporters in the 1972 presidential campaign are asking the AP politics writer what his lead going to be while he's still writing it, because they knew their bosses would eventually want something similar. That was in the 1970s. This with Rachel was going on in the 2000s. For the record, I never bothered Rachel about what her lead was going to be while she wrote it, but in retrospect, maybe my editors wished that I had. Like many people in the room here, I'm proud to call her a friend. She is a much beloved and highly valued member of her own family, of her AP family, and of the RNA family. For these reasons and many more, RNA gives Rachel Zoll this award in special recognition of her work and for what she means to the beat. Accepting this award is um, Sarah Nordgren. I'm truly honored to be accepting this award on behalf of Rachel. Um, uh, I'm a deputy managing editor at AP, and um, I've worked with Rachel for um, many years, and uh, am privileged to call her a friend. Um, I think that there are four things that uh, we can all agree on about Rachel, um, four qualities of hers that she uh, live has lived every day. Uh, one is her intelligence. Another is her knowledge, not just of the subject area, but also of the community. Um, you could count on her for the good gossip about uh, things that were going on around the world. Um, and and she really uh, her her knowledge is vast. I think uh, the third quality that comes to mind when I think of racial is her persistence. She uh, is a dogged journalist and wants to get the story first and get it right and often does. Um, someone uh, yesterday was telling me a story about a RNA meeting where a number of journalists were sitting around chatting and suddenly realized that Rachel wasn't there and <laughs> it did not mean good news for, the, for her competitors. Um, but I think the other uh, quality that, that I associate um, so closely with Rachel is her generosity. She is, she is absolutely um, dogged about sharing her knowledge with her young colleagues, um, contacts. Uh, you know, the AP has a, a vast um, network, but not many people who have any depth in religion to the extent that Rachel did. And Rachel, you know, to a person, would, takes the time and has the, um, the dedication to really help them understand the story and point them in the right direction. Um, Rachel is truly one of AP's very best um, uh, journalists, and I am very proud to call her a colleague. I'd like to read a couple of comments that uh, come from Rachel, who's very sorry not to be here. Um, Rachel feels both honored and humbled to receive this recognition from her colleagues, and she's very sorry that she can't be with everyone today. For her family, one silver lining of this time we've had with her over the last few months is that we've learned much more about the amazing community of reporters that Rachel has been a part of for the last 20 years. The opportunity to hear about the vital work that you all do every day and the adventures you've had together in getting it done has been a real gift. We are grateful for your work and the recognition of Rachel's role. Thank you from all of us. Rachel also has asked me to uh, let you know, I, I, most of you know that Rachel has been out for a number of months. Um, quite ill, uh, Rachel has asked me to let you know that she has terminal brain cancer and um, uh, 
continues to be Rachel in Rachel's way and is excited to hear from people and um, get notes from, from folks. I'm happy to share uh, her address with you if you don't have it. But um, uh, please uh, sp spend some time thinking about Rachel and the good work that she's done. And, and she, I know, is tremendously grateful for the award. <laughs> 